Hello and welcome to another tutorial about Houdini Engine for 3ds Max. My name is Ian and today I will be showing you the Bottle Generator, a new HDA available to be used in 3ds Max. As the name says, it's mostly used to generate different bottle shapes, but it can be used to generate pretty much any type of sweeping curve along the rectangular or circular shape. The HDA requires a single input, a curve or spline. This curve should be the profile of the shape we want to generate with the HDA. The subdivision of the curve affects the starting objects of the HDA. Let's dive into it. As you can see, we have two tabs of settings, bottle shape and features. For general shape, we have size X and Y. These are the dimensions of the base shape around which we are sweeping our input curve. Angon points is the number of sides our base shape has, 4 being the lowest, and thus forming our rectangular shape. Glass thickness is the thickness of the object. Top is in is the point on the curve at which the HDA will convert the edge loop into a circular shape. This is very useful for rectangular shapes to smooth out the transition from circular top to rectangular base. Bottom roundness is responsible for sliding the additional edge to smooth out or sharpen the bottom edge of the bottle, as you can see. Inset distance moves the bottom edge loops from or towards the edge and center of the bottle. Bottom height pushes the bottom polygons in or out of the bottle. This is very useful for making wine bottles. Our second tab is called Features. Here we can find some additional options for our bottle. Bottle lip is pretty self-explanatory. Lip width and lip thickness are used to tweak the shape of the lip. Cork options gives us a selection of procedural corks for the bottle. There are three types, wine, whiskey and beer. Beer cork is only generated when the bottle lip is turned on. Liquid gives us control over the filling of the bottle or so-called liquid. Label option allows us to create a procedural label around the bottle with two sliders, giving us control over the start and end height of the label. All of the features are unwrapped and ready to be textured. Let's go and try it out in 3ds Max. Let's get right into it. So, first things, we need to enable our session and load the HDA. So we go to our session configuration tab, start session. It takes a second or two to start it up. And then after that, all of our template HDAs are here. But since this is the new one, I have to load it up manually. So I'm going to go to my HDA. Load the latest one. Load S. There we go. Here we go. So now everything is loaded in. As I have said before, the tool requires a single curve as an input. I have already made one for this break one breakdown, so I will use that one. It's right here. Here we go. Let's go select our curve and press Create Modify HDA on selected objects. It takes a second. There we go. Our tool is now active and we now have exposed controls, which I have explained earlier in the earlier part of the video. Let's get to tweaking. I will try to make a simple wine bottle this time. So wine bottles are usually round. I recommend finding a reference. I'm going to start with low poly, so six angon points. Uh, this should be the ratio between the width of the bottle and the neck should be a bit more even, I would say. So maybe 10 here and then, oops, 
10 there, like that, sort of, and even 15. Let's have a look. Uh, this may be a bit too wide, so let's go 10.1. Perfect. Our top is in, currently doesn't really affect much since we have a round shape, so we don't have to worry about that. Glass thickness, I think it's all right like this. And uh, bottom roundness, this could be a bit more sharp, so I'm gonna push this a bit more like this, maybe. If you're not sure what it's gonna look like, you can always turn on your subdivision right here and see how smooth do you get with uh, bottom roundness. As you can see, if I go the slider down, it's more round. If we go up, it's gonna be more sharp, so I think something in between, maybe like this. Yeah, this looks fine. Great. I'm going to turn the subdivision off now. Uh, insert distance, so that's regarding our bottom. So let's do a bit more inset and then bottom height a bit more to the inside. So we get something like this. Yes, if you're not sure, again, turn on the subdivision, see what you get. I think this looks fine. Turn it back off so we work faster. And then we can go ahead to our features. So um, Wine bottles usually have bottle lips, so I'm gonna just make a wide lip like that, maybe. Maybe even a bit more. Maybe a bit wider and less extruded. Like that, perfect. For cork, we need wine cork, so that's good. Liquid, I'm gonna pour it maybe to this narrow section, so that's gotta be like I don't know, 60 something. Oh, there we go, 69.4, perfect number. Let's make it 70, like that. And then label, of course, depending how you want your bottle to look like, but I think like something small on the straight part of the bottle would be nice. Nah, that's not, not ideal. Let's go a bit lower like that, and then less from the top. Yeah, maybe like a stripe like that, perfect. And now pretty much our bottle is done. All you have to do is increase the I'm gonna put this to 12 so we get a more rounded result without subdivision. Uh, and I'm gonna convert this to an uh, editable poly. So I'm gonna bake it pretty much like that. Perfect. And now the tool is no longer active. I mean, this is now our editable poly. So now we can go ahead and tweak it a bit more. So let's go tweak it a bit more. Currently we have our bottle, our cork, label, and of course the fluid inside liquid. To get correct rendering results, you should detach your liquid to separate objects. Sometimes it just, if we are working with a modifier on a curve, then we have to detach it. If you're making a separate object, then you don't have to detach it, it's just the way it functions currently. So I can call this bottle liquid and maybe even, you know, just in case of the ease of transport, we can parent this to the original bottle. So now when we move our bottle, the liquid moves as well. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I have some test lights here, the HDRI and uh, some basic lights set up. So I'm going to apply a material, which I made before. I'm going to explain it in a second. I'm going to apply the material right here and add a subdivision to this, but uh, for instance, we don't have to bake it in, we can just make it for rendering like this. And then we can start our Corona renderer just to check out what we have at the moment. So let's see, okay. So this material I have applied has a dark glass, a cork, label material, and a liquid material inside. Okay, so. Let's tweak it this a bit to get a more believable result, to get something nicer. So what I would like, so the, all of these assets have their UVs, right, in the channel one, which means if we want to do something extra to them, we can just reuse the data from the channel one to channel two and then tweak it a bit so we don't lose it. For instance, this label has a noise applied to it in channel one, which is just getting the general feel of the paper, let's call it like, let's call it like that. And then uh, in channel two, I'm gonna 
set up the label uh, unwrap. So let's start with that. So for start, we can just go ahead and uh, detach the label so it's easier to work like that. So detach to an element. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we have our label. And uh, I'm going to remove the performance to standard and I'm going to turn on the label. As you can see, it's not displaying since this bitmap has been set up to work on channel 2, right? And currently we only have channel 1. So if you go to unwrap modifier, this is going to bring our UVs. We can copy this and paste it above and then change the channel to channel 2 and say, it asks us, do we want to move or abandon changes? We want to move it to channel 2. This is not going to remove the information from channel 1. It's just going to, in this modifier, it's going to move it from channel 1 to channel 2. Perfect. Okay. And now our, our image looks like this. A Bordeaux 2017 product of France. Amazing. So what we can do, it's a square image. We need to find our camera angle which is this, right? And then sort of select some polygons so we can see where, where we are. So this is the island we want to use. So the rest, we don't really have to use. So this one, right? This is the frontal one, perfect. So we can take this, move it aside so we know what we need. All of this, we can just scale and put it somewhere in the corner just in case. And then this information we can use, but as you can see, it's overlapped the front and back. So we can just go to our angle since it's UVs, the, we cannot select the, the back facing stuff. So we can just, depending on angle, deselect that. And there we go. We have our front part selected. We can now break it, move it aside. So this is our part which we need. And this is the back part, which we can just scale down and put it along with the rest of the, the rest of the team, sort of. Great. Now we can move this in our UV space. Okay, it's Bordeaux. It's a bit too small of an island. So let's make that a bit bigger. Maybe like this. Center it a bit, like that. Perfect. And our these polygons are crossing our UV space, so we can just select those. Detach them, move them aside, you know, just repeat the thing and put it along the rest of them on the white part. Perfect. And our second UV, uh, UV channel is pretty much set up. So like that, take our bottle, we can even attach it back. Perfect. Turbo smooth it. Iteration zero, render iterations one, like that. Let's see if we did apply it. No, oh, okay, we need we need the same modifier, so we can just copy it and paste it instance, so we have it instance across our whole object. And that's pretty much it. Now we have set up our second channel, and it's working. There we go, and the bottle is uh, pretty much set up. I mean. Um, Sometimes you can get full results with the tool, which means you can get the full bottle the, exactly as you like it, uh, just perfect the way it is from the tool. But sometimes you can get a pretty good start, like at 80% or 90% ahead, like this bottle, for instance. So it, everything we had to do is just copy the modifier and just move some UVs around. That's it. Now we have a set of bottle. It's, it's the same thing, like if you would like to make a bottle with, for instance, a thicker bottom like a whiskey bottle for instance that has a the same thickness alongside the whole sh the whole shell except the bottom we could just you know grab this uh, detach the bottom a bit just move it up and then you know just do a bit of manual work with it uh, but still get really good results so I think I think it's a very decent tool I think you can get very satisfying results with it and it, uh, it really works. I haven't had any crashes so far and uh, it's been really smooth sailing, I would say. Like for instance, we could like, we can generate a lot of bottles with this. We could, we could go and change the label. We could go maybe cut this up a bit, make it shorter so it doesn't go all the way around. Or we could maybe 
even select the top part and extrude it a bit to just get the top label as well. There's so many things you can do with it. So I recommend just, you know, have fun and uh, give it a try. You'll see that sometimes you don't get 100% perfect results, but you get pretty far, uh, which means you have less to do with your hands. So here are some bottles I made before, just, just an example. So you can, these are all gonna be included in the file and uh, you can just, you know, reuse them to your liking. You're gonna get all the textures done and everything else. So, you know, use it, tweak it, play with it. Let me know if something doesn't work or you're not really satisfied with the, the way of something works or you, you prefer maybe a different way of UX part, like maybe we should do this first and that first or something like that. I don't know. There's, you know, different people have different opinions. So I guess I would like to hear different opinions <laughs> from everybody else. So please, please uh, use the tool, uh, try it out, let me know. And um, yeah, hopefully I can make something else for you in the near future. And uh, thank you very much for your time and your attention. And uh, I hope you guys will find it useful and I hope you can make plenty of bottles or any other round, round type of shapes <laughs> with this. As you can see, I have made, where is it? I had it somewhere. Oh, there we go, we made like a, a vase. Or maybe, I think I even had like a cup somewhere. Yeah, there we go, like a cup. You don't have to do the cork label and everything in each and every one of them. You can just make a yourself like a cup generator or a pot generator or something like that. Just apply on a material and then there you go, it works like a charm. So, as said, I'm going to repeat it again. Please have fun with it. Send me your feedback. I'm really interested to see how you guys use this. And if you enjoy it, if it works for you, if you have some errors or something we can fix, please let me know. And uh, thank you for your patience. My name is Ian and talk to you guys soon. Have a nice day.